Well, we're rolling. This is Coach Cameron's <laughs> podcast with two amazing guests, <coughs> Megan Kirker. One of yous. <laughs> <laughs> and the great Aguilar, Stryker's Hello. daughter. Hello. So um, you, we have no script. We're, we don't have anything going on as far as uh, what we're going to talk about, but I'm going to tell you what I want to talk about. I want to talk about... Um, girls soccer. What what is your experience with it? What did you like about uh, growing up in the game, and what do you not like about it? Um, and there there's a high frequency of players that drop out, especially on the the women's game. Uh, you see it time and time again. Uh, I have my opinion, but I rather hear it from a female perspective. Uh, so what are your thoughts? We'll start with Megan, uh, before we start talking about Megan, kind of tell us, um, uh, where'd you grow up playing and, um, what are you doing now with, within the game? Um, so I grew up playing, I actually didn't, you got, you got to be right in that mic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You got to hear yourself. All right. All right. Um, I started playing, uh, I was actually kind of late. Like, I think I started, I was doing like, you know, when you're five years old and you're on the orange team or whatever. <laughs> like that's I did that when I was like five and then I was nine, I think, when I started playing rec. Um, I think I was in like Litchfield Park. And at that time it was like nothing. Like I don't even I don't remember like any big clubs, like there was there was maybe a few. Um, so I was playing on the sharks <laughs> and <laughs> um I remember playing against a couple people that I ended up playing with. Like, I ended up, I played against Aaliyah, Grice, and Keanu Mizada um, on different teams. And that was, that was the most fun I ever had. Like, it was, it was awesome. Nobody, you couldn't slide tackle, so that was lame. But (laughs) uh, it was really fun. What I remember from growing up, it was just, nobody cared. It was awesome. And you played at Millennium High School. I did. I played at Western Sky, and then I played at Millennium. Um, thinking I was gonna be coached by somebody else, and then you swooped in. I I, I jumped in. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be Shalongo, and he was gonna make me run, and then it was way better than that. Um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't make you run too much, but uh, um, I remember your first year, which was I hold the record at Millennium for the most wins <laughs> and the most losses in a year, so I hold both <laughs> records. And uh, mm-hmm. but I remember we got into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we got into the playoffs, it was w- we had you, Naomi, Kiana, Sophie Horner, yeah. Aaliyah, yeah. and then but when we got in the playoffs, barely, uh-huh. you stubbed your toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You remember? Yeah, I think at the time I lied to you about that happening. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! So what's the real story? <laughs> so. I um I was outside skateboarding with yeah. no shoes on. Yeah, and no, no, I knew that. Oh, you did? Okay. Your but mom I, told me or someone told oh, me. Oh, that's so messed up. I didn't stub it. I like cut the whole front of it off. Like, Ugh. like the very, very front was like it was all raw skin and it was blistering really bad. So like I could barely put shoes on. So yeah, it, I didn't play. It's it's <laughs> probably it's probably good you didn't play. Yeah, um, so yeah, so it, no, it, no, no, it, it <coughs> we were the 16th seed playing the no, the one seed and, yeah. and we only lost 2 0, so that was pretty, that was pretty good. Yeah, we had lost earlier in the season like 6 to 0, too, huh? Like to that same team, Perry, it was Perry. I think that was the first time we played them. Oh, but was it? We we lost to Horizon like 7 0, Hamilton. <laughs> Eight zero or something. Mm-hmm. Xavier was only five yeah. zero. Uh, we mm-hmm. we struggled through, but we did come back to beat Horizon, we did, which yeah. didn't help because I remember when we finished the season, I was like, we had three wins, mm-hmm. and I was just get us out, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, we're done. I survived year one, yeah. and we got into the playoffs anyways because of strength of schedule or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. So I remember I brought the whole JV team with us, and I subbed every time the ball yeah. went out. <laughs> Just to kill the clock. I remember sitting on the bench. It was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> but uh, it, it got better as time went on. But mm-hmm. um, all right, let's 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 talk to your, your, your friend next to you. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> yes. Alexia. 
Aguilar. And, and by, by the way, um, I remember Ramiz uh, Sablik. He was um, he, he he was actually coaching the uh, the U.S. Uh, national team as a goalkeeper coach, and he was recruiting um, at some Al Alianza. Oh, Al Alianza. Yeah. Yeah. And you were there, and he's he he was saying, "Oh man, Striker Aguilar's daughter. She's just." amazing mm -hmm. you know because you're playing against boys i think mm -hmm. yeah. and you're just killing it and he's like oh she's going pro um but apparently in uh, neon soccer but uh lexi tell us a little bit how you grew up uh with soccer and what was kind of your experience with it uh, well i always played i played since i was like five and my dad was like my coach the whole time so like we started off at santos fc and then that was like when I was like real young. And then we ended up moving to my dad's club, Excel Soccer Academy. So I played there for like literally all my years growing up. So that was, was nice. <laughs> it was really cool because I made like all my best friends there and stuff. And and you, extremely technical. I mean, Megan, uh, both of you are like crazy technical, high level players. Um, in the the women's game it's or uh, we'll say the girls game but when you're playing youth it there was very few players like like you two so what was that like i mean you're playing with boys so tell uh, what was it like being kind of the technical player and then playing with players that were not as technical what what was that kind of like um i would say that it was it was definitely different. Like, once I started playing with girls, like, I felt like you were mm -hmm. better than them. I don't know. <laughs> I would say that, yeah, it was definitely more interesting. It was a lot more fun, I think, because you could kind of be more, like, creative in the way you played versus with, like, when I was playing with the guys, maybe not everything would work out, like, every single move or whatever mm -hmm. would work out the way I wanted or whatever. But with the girls, I felt like I could really play, like, the way I wanted to play more so. So what was your um, transition like? So w w how long did you play with boys and when did you transition playing with the girls? I probably was playing with boys when I was like real young, like maybe like probably in like the single digits still. Like I was young, like maybe 10, like before 10, like nine, eight. And then once I like grew out of that stage, then I started playing with girls. But like my first team, we only had, like, nine girls. Like, we didn't even have enough for a team. So, like, we were still, like, kind of struggling in, like, youth soccer. Yeah. So what what's uh, your experience as um, far as um, uh, playing, you know, high school? You play at Thunderbird, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So what, what was uh, your thoughts on playing high school versus um, club? Um, I would say, well... My high school coach was Coach Angelo Iozo, and he was my assistant coach at club. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of this more, like, we played very similar to, like, the way we did because, like, kind of the tactics. We wanted to play, like, more of, like, that tiki-taka type soccer still. Um, but it was definitely more lax. Like, I felt, like, good not have like. Not the pressure. Yeah, like, you know, I always coached my, my dad, so it was nice to, you know, like, just take a little break, like, have some fun, play with different girls and all that. But it yeah. was cool. I always think it's good. Um, it, when I was playing um, club and then going to high school, there was that kind of like, oh, do you want to play club? Do you want to play high school? You could skip and stuff like that. And there's times I was like, ah, I just want to stay in club. But I'm so glad I did stay in high school because I love representing my school. And I, I love the difference of being part of something that's different than club and representing basically a zip code where you live uh, playing that club. What uh, For both of you, Lexi and uh, Megan, uh, w what are your thoughts on um, playing uh, club versus high school? What's the difference and what did you enjoy about uh, high school um, or did not enjoy in high school? Uh, we were actually just talking about this in the yeah, car. We uh, <laughs> like, cause you had kind of called me earlier and said what we were a little bit about what we were going to talk about. <clears throat> and, um, high school, man, it, it's just like, nobody cares. Like, and not like nobody's trying more so like there's no pressure, like, because 
like you said, you hold the record for the, <laughs> the like, worst or how many <laughs> losses. Whatever. Yeah, the most lost in a season. Yeah, like, my freshman, sophomore year, we were losing, like, 6, 7, 8, 0 all the time. And it was still so much fun. Like, just because, like, we were just playing to play. And even though we weren't winning, it was just, like, we were all just having fun. And then in club, like, you lose 6 to 7, 8, 0. It's, like, you really have to get your shit together after that. Like, you can't <laughs> – it's not supposed to – it's not just – for fun so for me high school soccer was where I could kind of let go and just like it was like playing as a little kid again like nobody had any expectations and not, I mean, like even a lot of them weren't even playing in club at all so like they had no intentions of taking it farther than high school yeah. so it was it was just fun it was just nobody cared that was the most fun I had playing soccer personally I would say for me it was we were like a smaller high school then, because you guys were what six A. Yeah. We were six A, and down to five we got a. down to five A. Yeah. Last year. And I think I was four A. So like our competition wasn't that great. Like so I know like during the real season games, like most of our games were like blowouts, but like we were like blowing out other teams. Mm -hmm. But I played with like some girls from my club team too, and like so I still had like some of my best friends on that team, so it was cool. And then once the playoffs came, like, that's when we were, like, really facing the competition. So it was, like, it was cool to, like, finally get back into, like, the competitive side of it, too. Like, once we were, like, faced against, like, harder teams. But, yeah, it was just, it was fun to just, like, be able to, like, kind of mess around. Like, just be, like, not as serious, like you said. Like, it was, like, no pressure. Yeah. It was cool. Now, you both uh, went to NAU. Um Originally to play, Lexi, you played. Megan went and just went to school. Um, and I think they were planning on you playing. And then they mm -hmm. were very upset that you didn't decide to play. Um, so, Megan, you're about to graduate uh, college mm -hmm. um, from NAU. Why? And you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Why didn't you decide to play um, soccer at NAU? And it doesn't have to be any of you. I mean, you, you decided, I just want to go to school. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really hard decision for me. I had been wanting to quit for a long time before I did because I I enjoyed it so much as a kid. And like I said, we talked about high school. Like, there was no pressure. Like, I, just, I really struggled with um, performance anxiety all throughout, like, um, my high school years. So it started becoming less about just having fun and playing and more about like political crap and, and how to get a scholarship and what my future's like, you know, like I have to have a certain future. <clears throat> and I think it just started becoming not worth it for me. It was like affecting my health. It was affecting like my quality of life, I guess. And it, it wasn't. Yeah. Was that's funny. interesting. You say that because for, for me, I, I would just pose this question for my son, Jack. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why, this coach asks, why don't you move your your son to a, a more high-level profile club mm -hmm. um, from Excel to somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And because he'll get more looks. And I'm like, looks for what? Like, oh, get more offers to university and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm fine with Jack just going to PC for one, because it's free <laughs> Two, if my son does get more looks mm -hmm. at the university, yeah. then the university is going to be, um, Oh, you have a spot and we'll pay this percent, but you're still paying 20 grand a year or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm like, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, uh, I took my son to the air force and, Everyone was like, oh, will he make the team? I'm like, I just want my son in the Air Force. Yeah. It, whether he plays or not, I don't care. Um, I love the fact that my daughter and my son, Jack, they, they like soccer, and they'll, they'll play it for a lifetime. That's all I care about. Um, I'm not a fan of the university system and, or anything like that. I'm not against yeah. it. I'm against school debt. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there, there is <laughs> – it, there, there's a different level. People will pay anything so they can say, oh, I got my son and daughter uh, to Division One, whatever. Yeah. And for 
and they'll pay for that. Yeah. Thousands upon thousands of dollars say, look, my kid plays here. Just for the status. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a status. It's a, it's a moment of celebration on mm-hmm. Instagram, yeah. but then you send your kid off to somewhere crazy. Mm-hmm. Cody, Dakota went to Seattle U. We turned down Seattle Lou, uh, Lou mm-hmm. Seattle U like three times mm-hmm. because they said, we're going to give, um, oh, we're going to give Cody the academic scholarship. Mm-hmm. She earned that. So it was like 20 grand. Oh, you only have to pay 45000 a year. We're like, no, that's okay. Only. I know. And I'm like, okay. we're not doing it. <laughs> we Then they're like, oh, we'll give you a $10,000 scholarship. I said, no. It wasn't even an issue. Mm-hmm. And then they came back with full. Mm-hmm. So Cody goes, and it was, she hated it. Yeah. Like the, the, the first day, she was part of like 11 freshmen. The first day, they all went to get uh, IDs, fake IDs, to so they can drink. <laughs> That's that, so not that, Cody. Either. Yeah, Cody doesn't drink. But that was her experience, and then mm-hmm. the coaches were just, you know, and I, and I love Seattle U. I love Julie and stuff like that, but, yeah. man, it was kind of like it was all cutthroat, and yeah. you got to play this way. You got to do this. They took, took away her identity as far as ability to play with their yeah. feet. I told her, I told them, don't, don't take her. If you're not going to use her how she's gifted for, you, you, mm-hmm. you, she's not going to defend well. Mm-hmm. She doesn't do that. She's not big and physical, but she can hold on to the ball. If you let her spin and turn and keep the ball and then play it to players that run through, she'll be great for you. Yeah. And it was all kind of like can't make mistakes and all this stuff, and it was just cutthroat. Um, and yeah. then ultimately she's like, I'm done, mm-hmm. and she, she left. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I appreciate you bringing that, Megan. It's what you kind of just figured out a lot earlier than most. And um, Cody had to go through that process and get raked through it. And it's just not fun. Yeah. Like I've heard so many stories from all my friends. Cause I have a lot of teammates and friends who went D1 and it's all the same story. Like they just, they just get grinded down to the bone. They get run down into the ground and they just end up hating it by the end of it. Like they end up hating the sport. More than they ever did. It's just sad. So what was your experience, Lexi? Um, it's kind of similar. I think, um, so I ended up going to NAU and um, playing there. And my that was like, I think I was there for like six months. And then I left like during winter break. Um, it was good in the beginning, I think. And I think like, for me, I knew school was going to be hard to like balance both. And I knew like going D1 was going to be like a lot. But it was definitely, like, a lot more than I thought. And I think the coaching on top of that was not exactly what I expected it to be. So it was interesting how that went down. Um, I think being away from home was hard for me, too. Like, that played a part in it. Just, like, being away from everybody. Because that was, like, my first time, like, you know, just being on my own and stuff. And the soccer was... It was okay. I did enjoy playing in the beginning, and I think the more it kind of, like, it just took a toll on me the longer I was there. Like, it just turned to, like, not a good situation. So I was just trying to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we enjoyed the fact that you came to PC and played. Oh, yeah, um, that was fun. You, you helped out <laughs> quite a bit. And Kiana, same, at, mm-hmm. went to NAU, came, played at Phoenix College, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was a, a good transition. Um but um, yeah, it's. I think. I think that there is there's a big problem, and, and, and I'm a college coach. I want to win. But in order to, in my opinion, in order for to get the players to compete at their highest level, you have to remove stress and anxiety as much as possible. And but, and but I've done this too, as far as a coach. I've brought a ton of stress and anxiety based on got to win, got to do that. So I've been through that, so I get it. But mm-hmm. I can at least look in the mirror and go, uh, you suck, mm-hmm. stop it, you know, kind of thing. And I'm still trying to figure it out. It's not easy being a coach to balance. How do you, mm-hmm. how do you develop young minds to learn and cultivate around a – beautiful game of soccer and be able to allow them to be in a situation that they can be the best version of themselves. 
and then that would be a better situation. Um, and, and with Megan, she, she experienced her, your sophomore year. We actually did, um, we did quite well. We got to the quarterfinals, I believe against Chandler Mm -hmm. and I was pretty much got to win. It was very screaming, yelling, all that stuff. And it was not fun. And then I had this whole shift on how I should behave. Um, and I kind of brought it to PC as I was, um, or after my PC season, I was like, I- I'm changing everything I I'm doing. I'm like, I just want to be happy. Mm-hmm. And we went that whole kumbaya. So that was your, your junior year. So your sophomore year, freshman, sophomore year, freshman was, let's not get scored on too many times. <laughs> sophomore <laughs> years were pretty good. Let's go win a state title. And it yeah. was kind of like angry bus ride. Your, yeah. <laughs> your, um, your junior year. Mm-hmm. No, no. The transition was your senior year. Yep. The oh, ju- yeah. junior year, I brought Cody over yeah, yeah. and then we got to the quarterfinals again we against lost Chandler. Some penalties, yeah. Lost some penalties. Oh, got screwed right. by the ref and all that stuff, but yeah. that really doesn't matter. And <laughs> your the next year, your senior year, mm-hmm. where you, you and Kiana were almost not going to play. So yeah. t- tell me, uh, tell me what, why you guys weren't going to play, and be brutally honest. <laughs> so, so um, the uh, the reason was we were doing really well in club my junior year like we were getting really good we were all like like i had come on to me and kiana had come on to this team where they had already all known each other very well like i would say like a, the core group like six or seven of them had been playing together since they were like what like six yeah or something yeah. like that so they all knew each other very well and we kind of came in um as a few of those girls were leaving like jody and i think somebody else left oh sydney year. sydney yeah so um, and we had come from not really knowing much tactically about the game. Cause like, obviously you improved me and Kiana's technical ability very much so, but we didn't really know anything. We didn't know the number system. I didn't really know what runs to make, what plays to make. So whatever. So we were having like a sort of adjustment period when we got there. And I think at that point we were doing well enough to where we thought, we could make it to state cup. We could make it to nationals and like do really well. So, and we were committed to NAU. I think I was at least at the time, or I was thinking about it very seriously. And so we were going on a visit and we had kind of like been talking to ourselves. Like if we really want to get in the best shape and do as well as we can, when we finally do get there, we thought that high school would slow us down, I guess, you know, in like a, conditioning way and just like playing at the highest level because high school wasn't as rigorous I guess as club was so we thought that if we just skipped and just practiced with our with our club coach and our club team um that we would be in the best shape that we could so. yeah it, it, and what Kiana's mom told me was that they weren't going to play because it wasn't fun and I was mean and and <laughs> Which is true, which was totally true. You were kind of mean. I was. I was horrible. <laughs> and the thing is, like, which is okay if you can recognize it and, and mm-hmm. make a change. But luckily, you decided to come back. We and, did. We um, did. Do you know why we, we decided? I begged. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> why? I mean, well, I mean, you did beg, but we told the coach at the time, Andre Luciano at NAU, that we were thinking about doing that. And he got mad. Like he got he got very upset he that was we were cool. gonna do that. He was cool. He was like, um, you've been with this team for however long and you're just gonna abandon them like that. Like you've worked hard and and this is, you know, a year where you're gonna do really well, like you guys are in good shape and he's like, and you're just gonna like leave them in the dust. Like I don't think that that's the right thing for you to do. And that was not the reaction we were expecting at all. We were like, <laughs> oh, we're going to say this. And he's going to be like, yeah, I want you to be the best you can be when you get here. And he was like, no, that's stupid. I am so we were like, oh, dang. I <laughs> love Andre. So when yeah, Andre, really cool. <laughs> when he came to um, Yavapai mm-hmm. um, and he, he went to Yavapai and I got a chance to compete against him and, and get to talk to him, which I haven't really had a chance to do. He's mm-hmm. a, an amazing human being and very... Yeah. 
um, intelligent about, you know, his words he uses. He's very specific. Uh, he's very organized in that. Mm -hmm. um, NAU really screwed up on that one. Yeah, they did. Facts. <laughs> um, so, but it, it is what it is. But I did not know that story. I'm so glad. Yeah. So glad you decided to come back because it was a, a cool experience. That was you, my favorite season. You before. guys played so well, and we didn't do anything tactically. No. We, we, Lexi, you no. uh, believe all we did, I kid you not, for the first month, we, we just did kumbaya. Like, <laughs> all we did was team building and yoga. And, and, yoga. <laughs> yeah. and that is it. And when we played our first game against um, Sunny Slope, mm -hmm. and Sunny Slope wasn't bad either. Yeah, I think you, were you at that game? I definitely was, I think I was just there for the final, or when you guys made it to like the Oh, night. the state and final? Yeah, I was there for that. I think so, then. So I think she probably did. I missed the wide open shot. She made fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sunny slope game, you guys were like amazing, just like knocking the ball, just boom, boom, boom. Every, you guys even did the double dummy, yeah, and we, we haven't really prepared for that. And you guys mm -hmm. were able to do it, but I believe that it was kind of just managing talent. We had we had talent. Yeah, we and always had that. Me as a coach, stayed out of it. I'm like, I'm gonna stay. Just let you guys be the talent. I spent more time doing. Uh, individual meetings with Jen, with yeah. you guys, mm -hmm. and just seeing how you guys are doing. That was my coaching. Mm -hmm. And it was our best year with me not coaching. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was there for that game. Mm -hmm. oh, the sunny Slope? Yeah, yeah I did yeah. go there. Yeah. So. It was cold. <laughs> so. Back to you guys with the game. What have you seen as far as other players, as far as their experience and how many high level players have you seen just drop out of the game? Mm. You want to go first? I don't know. Probably. Oh, actually, quite a few. Because there were some girls that left NAU with me, too. Like There was a f quite a few that yeah. left with you. So freshman year. It, it's a lot everywhere. Definitely. Seattle U, they lot they lose a ton. Well, yeah. it just definitely made me lose my love for the game because I was done for like a year after that. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even think about playing. I don't know how many people did you know. I mean, if we're just talking about soccer, <clears throat> um, I don't know. I would say probably like uh, intimately new. I would say like three or four probably, but like just D one women's athletics in general. So I couldn't even count. I couldn't even tell you. And it's such a similar story every time. It's always about a coach or about the program. It's never about the sport. It's never that they were doing bad or that they stopped enjoying the sport. It's either the coach made it unbearable or the way that the program was structured was just terrible or the trainers that they had or just something like that. It was never it was never about the game. It was always about something yeah, because when I came to PC, like, I like I really enjoyed Like, that made me, like, want to play again. Like, I was, like, actually enjoying my time. Mm -hmm. And, and th there's – it may be from the pressure. So, Coach Cigar and myself, we could lose every game, and we wouldn't lose our job. Mm -hmm. So, the pressure here is different. Yeah. We want to win, but we don't have to. Mm -hmm. at NAU, these D1s, they have to win. Yeah. And I think that messes up the success they could possibly have. Mm -hmm. So NAU, you know, any Division One, if, if you're not winning, you're going to be fired. Yep. So that might have some something to do with it as well. Yeah. But w what about club? Not I know You guys, you're fortunate enough to have a good club coach uh, in Striker Aguilar, your, your father, Lexi. Mm -hmm. Um, but from competing against other programs and stuff, I mean, I, I like striker. I, I moved my son mm -hmm. over there because he learned his technical stuff already. And I transitioned, learned the tactical. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I, what I love about striker is he controls the sidelines, yeah, which is yes. awesome. Yeah. And parents <laughs> won't, if they're going to speak <laughs> yeah, up, they're, yeah. they're going to get dealt with. <laughs> yeah. and, and the parents can't coach from the sideline. Mm -hmm. All right, that's mm -hmm. unique. I don't, uh, describe to me what have you noticed on the opposition? We don't have to name clubs. I'll do that. But um, what have you noticed against those you competed with? How were the 
the parents' behavior? How was the coach's behavior? Um, what have you What have you noticed in the in the youth game as far as sideline conduct? Did you see a lot of coaches just joysticking teams, telling them everything to yes. do, screaming and yelling at the referees to manipulate a call? What kind What kind of environment does that bring? What kind of stress does that bring to the kids? I think at the youth level, it's just like, why are you doing that? Because <laughs> like, it's everywhere, especially in youth, which is crazy. Because I think that I I can understand, I guess, what they're trying to do. Like you're molding a player when they're when they're that young, but <clears throat> I don't think, especially from the parents, like I can see a coach making adjustments, even though that they're yelling and screaming most of the time and not helping at all. <laughs> like I can see where that would make a little bit more sense to me but the parents it's just like what are you like what are you doing <laughs> like why you are know? you they, like, it, it just doesn't help at all and i don't see why they feel the need um i think it creates i guess an environment where the these children feel like they have to perform up to a certain standard or they're gonna get you know, that ride home is going to be terrible or, you know, that next practice is going to be terrible. And that's what they're thinking about while they're playing. And that just, that just brings on a whole lot of unnecessary stress and stupidity onto these 12 year old kids who yeah, are just trying like to have fun. too much on them. Yeah. It's so it, we, we, we all get yelled at Lexi. Mm -hmm. If yes. someone's screaming at you on this, from the sideline, it's happened to all of us. Does it make you perform better, or Me what happens? No, I make you perform worse. <laughs> like I don't really like someone screaming at me, and I think my dad, because he coached me for so many years, like and uh, like with a lot of the girls on my team, like he learned all their personalities so well, and so like he knew how to coach us, like as individuals. Like he knew like some of us, like reacted well when being. Like, I don't know if screamed at, it's like preferred, but like, you know, more like hard pressure on them or something while some would rather not like, it's more of like a conversation you need to pull, like pull them to the side or something. Mm -hmm. But I would say, yeah, I didn't really like it. Like I, even up in college, like I hated it getting screamed at. Like I was just like, Ugh. yeah, God, I, I don't see the logic of doing it because, um, and I've done it. It's never worked. Um, it's more of me being frustrated that, you know, I'm taking the loss or whatever it is, or they're not doing something I told them to do. Mm -hmm. And that that's not how we learn. So what, what I've learned in coaching, it, it's, it's more about, can you manage like what your father's doing, managing, managing the team, manage the talent, uh, to get the, the most out of them. Uh, we're all different. Um, but I think even me as a player, I remember my coach here at PC, he yelled at me and I yelled back. Um, <laughs> he, he, he made a comment to me and I literally stopped playing and I said, shut the freak up. I use a different <laughs> word um, and just went off on him and yeah. then went on and played. And the thing is, I was the star here. <laughs> and he, so he pulled me to the side after and goes, you cannot do that. I'm like, don't. And I told him like, don't talk to me mm -hmm. when I play. Cause it's a processing thing. I cannot process the game and deal with the game. If you're giving me information, I'm like, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. You want to correct me later after the game, go ahead, but do not do it during the game. Mm -hmm. And, and I dealt with it unprofessionally, but never happened again. <laughs> but, but that's not fair. <laughs> You know, I, mm -hmm. because I was the top goal scorer, you know, I got special treatment, mm -hmm. but I couldn't perform in any other way. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, I, I just don't understand how, how coaches can just constantly give information out in the way they, that they do <laughs> and expect performance to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how that's possible. And maybe we can do a test. <laughs> we we yeah. could do a test. We I, I, I always want to do like um I want to do a experiments. Yeah. I want to change the point system mm -hmm. and um do every time your team connects a pass in the back half that's one point. Every time you uh 
get a pass connected in the tech and have to get two. And now we have that, that park at bell bank where you can literally hit the points and you can have like 140 to 72 and, yeah. and remove the, the referee out of the equation. <laughs> I, I don't think people would yell at the refs as much if, if the game was being decided on possession, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, but I, the processing thing is, you know, a problem. And mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I know how to play. Yeah. Let me play. You can fix me into a different player later, um, but during the time of the game. So because there's a lot of emotion, here's the next question I have for you guys. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a fight um, on the female <laughs> side? <laughs> Have you ever seen a parent strike a child? Have you ever seen a coach strike a coach? Have you ever seen a handshake line not go too well? Um, <laughs> what What do you remember back in your youth days um, where emotions got a little heated and people started hitting each other? Well. <laughs> and can I find um, it on YouTube? Uh, okay. You can find one on YouTube, I think. Um, uh-huh. Youth wise, I didn't see anything. Like I grew up in like a very nice, like pretty nice area, <laughs> and um, like nobody was taking soccer really seriously where I was. Um, it wasn't a high level, so emotions weren't as high. There wasn't a lot of pressure. Um, up until I, I got to excel, <laughs> that I didn't see anything. The first fight I ever saw. Was actually Lexi. <laughs> what? <laughs> we had a lot of fights at Excel. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. since I was there, there was at least like seven. There was Eight. a lot of fights. Like, like, within the team or oh, against yeah. other teams? The other against team. other teams. Yeah. All right, all right. I yeah. don't think we ever fought. Give me details. <laughs> so <laughs> the first fight that I ever saw, the first fight that I ever saw, um, I was very new to the team. And I didn't know them very well. So I think, actually, they were borrowing me at first. Oh, yeah, we were. We were. And um, we were in tournament, and it was pretty heated. Like, we had been, like, exchanging fouls for a while. And um, this girl fouled Lexi, and she, like, got up real quick, you know? Like, how somebody gets to, like, kind of tries to get in your face. And Lexi's on the floor, so she got up real quick, too. And they were in each other's face. And I was kind of, I was pretty close to them. Like, I was on the <laughs> sideline, and they were sort of, like, towards the middle on, like, our attacking half. And I remember watching, like, oh, my God, are they going to fight? <laughs> and uh, the other girl, like, she, like, swung at you, and she missed. Oh, yeah, and she pushed me first. Yeah, she pushed her. And then Lexi was like, okay, are we going to fight? And then she, like, tried to swing this other girl, and she missed. And so Lexi, <laughs> Lexi, grabbed her, Lexi grabbed her by the back of her head, by the back of her, like grabbed her hair and just started like hammer fisting. Her in the oh face. my gosh! And it was so funny to me because I was so shocked. I didn't even move. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and the whole Excel team just collapsed. Like they were all there in like two seconds. And the other girls' team, they all stayed right exactly where they were. Yeah, they, did. they didn't move at all. So it was like. 10 on one for like five seconds oh and then the gosh. rest kind of broke it up because it was over <laughs> in the first five seconds so but yeah there was a lot more lexi what was going through your brain i definitely had some i was like quick to get mad especially like in my <clears throat> like when i was playing youth soccer or like younger days like my club days i was definitely we were like 14 yeah now, I think. Y- y- you know I know where your bloodline comes from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Megan, I don't know if you know this. I grew up with her her mother. Oh. Yeah. I thought you grew up more with her dad. Striker, you too. played with him. Yeah. I didn't know that so, you knew her mom. Martha, her mother, <laughs> Martha. threw a rock and hit me in the head <laughs> when I was, like, in elementary school. That's how far we go back. Did you deserve oh, it, though? No. <laughs> To be debated. We don't All know. Right. So, don't know. yeah, story. well, Martha <laughs> had had a couple brothers, three, <laughs> that were like, and we won't give names or details, yeah. but I grew up with these guys. Yeah. I'm glad they were my friends, but they were the toughest kids in school. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. like crazy tough, like Nobody was gonna real fights yeah. set up. We'll meet you at Roadrunner Park yeah. and we're going to go have a fight. Yeah. And um, yeah, now, yeah. I'll give you, uh, I got to tell one story about my, my hood. So, <laughs> Shut <up>. so Shut <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Lexi's uncle I yes. will remain nameless. He, <laughs> he, he had a big fight coming up at yeah. Roadrunner Park and it's Saturday night and he's just like making out with some girl. <laughs> he's like 15, 16 years old. Uh-huh. And he's, you know, he has a fight coming up like in, within like 30 <laughs> minutes and he's making out with some girl. Like I'd be nervous. I wouldn't be like making out with a girl. And he's then been, been around the block. Yeah. Then he did his fight, beat him up. And then he was back with his girl. I'm like, <laughs> what the flip? Like no nerves. Yeah. And I got a million stories, but I won't, I won't tell him now, yeah. but I, I think I know where your fighting comes from because you have a fighting pedigree yes. on your mother's side yes, yes. and your father's side. Oh, so, yes. um, yeah, I, I was just around it. I was always scared as a kid because I was always around fights and stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I was so scared. When the I Fernandeses. Was. The Fernandeses, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, those were my people. Luck, yes. Luckily, when they first moved in, I met Cruz and Jamie mm-hmm. right away. Um, and the first interaction was we had a headbutt competition. <laughs> that was our first interaction. And we've been, we've been friends ever since. Nice. So They're very competitive. Yes. Yeah. And That's Jaime so and yeah. So, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was, uh, I am just glad they were my friends because <laughs> if it wasn't the case, I've been. A different problem but that, that's where your fighting comes from mm-hmm. okay. but uh to to you megan uh, you talk about fighting so i saw dakota's first brawl so she <laughs> dakota i can't even imagine that well she played on an all uh, hispanic team because uh-huh. that's where the players were so that's where i took my daughter uh-huh. um and there was a uh the team you know um what was it called? Far West. Mm-hmm. So it was Far West, but so they were um, ninety or what? What years are those? O uh, two or two thousands? Yeah. So are you an O one, Megan? Yeah. Okay. I always so, played two thousand. So it was a Far West team, mm-hmm. and um, that was Jenny was on that team, the keeper for a PC. Super Far West. Far. Oh no no no! no. The, this was uh, the Hispanic team. Oh. Okay. Hammers. Okay. Oh, um, hammers. Yeah. yeah. So, I used to hate hammers. <laughs> <laughs> and they were playing Far West. And mm-hmm. who was it? Um, you guys know her. She's Louise. What is her name? Sam. Was it Sam? Is it, she played for hammers. Was she blonde? Kind of tall. No, it's all Hispanic. Stephanie? No, it, it might have been. No, no, it might have been Sam. Sam's like really smaller, short. really skilled. Yeah. And, yeah. and we'll crush people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, this, the big center back for far West mm-hmm. pushes, I think it was Sammy pushes Sammy. Mm-hmm. I think Sammy. Um, and her response was, Oh, you pushed me. I punched. So she punched <laughs> her and then they're both holding hair. Mm-hmm. Parents came in to break it up <laughs> and then they kind of broke it up and then Sam comes around the corner, jumps into the pile, <laughs> hammer fist, brawl goes again, a parent hits a kid, and everybody goes in at this time. And Dakota, she she's just like, does it stand? He said, I don't know what to do. And she started jogging towards the fight. We're like, stop. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Get back over she's there. <laughs> yeah. She's so we 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 said don't go anywhere we we just grabbed because we got scared because a parent uh punched a kid yeah and i think i remember hearing about that it was, oh, like it was big nuts thing, yeah. so we we started leaving with cody we're like i'm like someone's gonna pull a gun i'm out of here and yeah, yeah it it was scary <laughs> because that. these girls did not mess around they're like oh fight this is normal yeah let's go beat someone let's down go. but then a parent hit a kid and then we're like we gotta get out here and then Soon as we are getting out of Fear Farm, seven, eight cop cars, jump, 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 all came in. I'm like, Jeez. get me out of there. And then <laughs> we, we stopped playing with that team because I'm like, we can't. <laughs> that's when I think we brought her over um, to Excel. Mm. Oh, yeah, was, I remember yeah. playing with her. 
Yeah, so we had to get her out of there. But um, oh my gosh, yeah, it w- it was a nightmare. But yeah, fights. Yeah, on the girl side, mm-hmm. it does exist. I'm yeah, I it. think honestly, more so than the guys, in my personal experience. Um. I can remember one big fight we had where I remember parents got involved. Yes. The Vegas one? Yes. My yeah. mom came at me. The ve- <laughs> She did. She I think really I did, did hit a mom, too, on accident. But True. they was just like, so we had been like, this game was dirty. Yeah. Like, that was we the were, girlies, right? Yeah. Yeah. This girl, uh, that was the, another time, too, where they swung at her first. Mm-hmm. And they just didn't know how to swing, so they missed. And then Sigali started, you know, beating the beating the crap out of her. Yeah, she did. And um, but this time we were all down, so the both teams collapsed in on this on this fight. And <coughs> I was on the other side of the field, so by the time I got over there, parents were already coming up off the sideline to try to like get their kids out of there. And we were all visiting Vegas. I don't think they were like maybe they were a Vegas team. They might have been. I think they might have been, but um, Wh- yeah. Why Why do you think it gets so heated? What what? The officials, how, how do they call these games? I, I've i always said referees ref girls game different. Like, they let mm. a lot go. They do. Why? Yeah. I think guys generally play more, like, violently. Like, they're very fast and quick, and they're just stronger than than girls usually are. So, like... Um, when a foul happens in a guy's game, it's it looks really bad. Like it looks like really it was a really hard foul, and you know they flop and stuff. So <laughs> you gotta call it, or nobody's gonna yeah. Nobody's gonna get up. Sometimes but. it's not so bad if they let it go, but like there's certain times where you're like, okay, come on. Like obviously, yeah. like if people are like having ex- word exchanges back and forth to each other, like you can yeah. kind of yeah figure out what's gonna happen if you let it go. Yeah, I I think like why the red i don't know i think um it doesn't look as bad like the girls game tends to be a little bit slower than a, than a guy's game so like when something happens it looks a lot worse because it was so fast and hard and quick but it, I, I don't know it being slower which which it is mm-hmm. but it for me it, it's easier to identify a foul yeah um, you would think right <laughs> yeah i, I i've seen uh, I've seen fouls nonstop on on the girl side, yeah. um, and I guess if it's not uh, uh, legs not broken, I guess it's okay. But yeah, it it's uh, I I I have it on my podcast all the time. Just like where's my ACL <laughs> and segment, and I, I just throw it on, and these girls just kill each other from behind, and and mm-hmm. just it's acceptable. Yeah, and a lot of those fouls would be red cards on the guy side, yeah. and it's just like. We'll talk to the girls. It's okay. Just please don't do it again. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. I think girls don't fall as much, I would say. Because I think, you know, like, from my personal experience, I feel like I have something to prove. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, whenever I play with guys, I play a lot harder. Because I feel like there's just this kind of unspoken thing where they just think they're so much better than me. Yeah. So I play, like, a, a lot, a lot harder. So... Um, and I think, yeah. like, I know that there's, like, this sentiment of girls, women's sports not just not being taken as seriously. So, I, like, I feel like we don't get to flop, like, you know? Like, guys flop all over the place, and with girls, it's like, you can't do that. Like, it's just not accepted. So, I think a lot of the times, too, refs don't call it if you don't fall. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah. so. You I, have to sell it. Do, do, yeah, do, you have to sell it. I figured that out later. Mm-hmm. I started selling it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, if you guys have kids in the future, let's assume you have two little ones, and they want to do soccer, mm-hmm. how how are you going to navigate that? Let's assume uh, uh, Excel's not around. <laughs> do you guys get involved as coaches, or do you – just tr- try to find a good environment. Mean, wh- what do you do? What do you, uh, what do you, how are you going to develop your kid in this environment that we have? Hmm. I think I would look like for, I probably would not coach. I think I would like want to help them out. Like when they're young, like I would definitely do stuff with them on the side, you know, mm-hmm. like training at home, whatever. 
trying to get them into it and little tricks, whatever. But I think I would probably look for a club that shared like the same values that like mm-hmm. like I had when I was playing and like growing up and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I think for me, I would just like push really hard that if you're not having fun, you don't have to play. Like once if if it's like you know something that you want to do then you know of course do that but like the second it feels like someone someone else is pushing it on you then you don't have you don't have to play anymore like it's supposed to be fun yeah so if yeah. it's not fun anymore don't you know i pulled cody out of club twice where she didn't play mm-hmm. and there was one year she didn't play at all mm-hmm. um where she just guest played yeah cuz i didn't want her getting abused um, Mm -hmm. by whomever was Mm -hmm. uh, involved. Plus it's expensive. (laughs) Um, That that's no joke. So, but yeah, Mm -hmm. it's a tough situation, but I think, I think winning happens because the team has the best players. And I think Mm -hmm. we need to stop stressing out the game mm-hmm. and change. We have to change the rules in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I think the rules have to change. I think it needs to be about high scoring far as every point mm-hmm. is every pass connect. You get a point and just mm-hmm. stop making all, Oh, it's the ref's fault. Or yeah, yeah. so-and-so gave up that goal or what? Like, mm-hmm. no, you let's make it a possession game. Let's, mm-hmm. Because I want goals to be worth one. I want them right. to be the weakest value. But you get the ball back, and then, yeah. and then you can connect more passes and keep building up that lead. Mm-hmm. But they need, they got to change the game, especially for yeah. the youth. There there needs to be development because too many kids are not like you guys. They're just don't they don't like the ball. They they don't know yeah. how to handle the ball mm-hmm. because of stress that we put on these kids and having to win on every Saturday whether mm-hmm. you play for the purple team or not, Megan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that, like, these these kids are getting recruited when they're 13 years old, like, they just, that's just too much. That's too much. It's a lot. That's, yeah. that's crazy. But soccer can be fun, again, hopefully. Uh, hopefully this Neon League works out and you guys uh, can win lots of money playing in yeah. that neo Neon Indoor Soccer, whatever it is. Yeah, it's been League. fun so far. Yeah, it has been. Well, it'd be interesting, especially if it gets picked up and yeah. they elevate the cash prizes. And you'll learn more about that later, but we have to wrap this up. It's been a long time. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Lexi yes. Aguilar and Megan <laughs> Kirker. Um, this is a Coach Cameron podcast. Uh, having two unbelievable soccer players on the show sharing their uh, stories, and we appreciate you and all that you guys have done for the game that um, you can find us on iHeartRadio, Google play or Spotify now yes. or wherever else podcasts are available, but you can see us live every Sunday, 8 PM Mount standard time um, on YouTube live. Yes. Hopefully we'll see you then. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.